This episode is brought to you by CyberGhost VPN. You've heard us talking about them on our channel before. That's because they're a leading VPN provider and we're among their 36 million users. If there's one VPN you'll be reading about in history books, it's probably them. We use CyberGhost VPN all the time and it's the perfect tool to hide your IP address and encrypt your internet connection. This way you can be a ghost online with all your privacy protected by a strict no logs policy. But it's not just all about keeping snoopers, hackers, and spammers at bay. You can also use CyberGhost VPN to cross virtual borders and get rid of geo restrictions. This way you can access all the content from over 35 streaming platforms. From our own experience, all those history documentaries on platforms like Netflix US, BBC UK, or Amazon Prime are worth it. One CyberGhost VPN subscription lets you protect up to seven devices at the same time. Plus, because they have apps for every operating system, you're truly covered. If you want to enjoy all the benefits of CyberGhost VPN, head to the link in the description. You can now enjoy a special 77% discount off the yearly plan and get complete digital privacy for just $2.75 a month. Plus, you get six extra months for free. Thanks to their 45-day money-back guarantee, everything is risk-free for you. So click the link in the description and get CyberGhost VPN today. The Short Takeoff C-130 Hercules, Operation Credible Sport, 1980 through 1981. Lockheed C-130 Hercules is one of, if not the most famous, transport planes used by the United States Armed Forces. Since it was first put into service in 1954, it has been used practically wherever American soldiers set foot. Made in more than 40 versions, the C-130 was used in a variety of roles as a tactical airlifter, combat aircraft, for search and rescue missions, and in many other variants. In 1980, three C-130s were planned for modification in the most curious fashion in order to participate in the rescue of American hostages in Tehran. The project of adapting Hercules aircraft for the rescue mission was a desperate measure created by one of the greatest fiascos in the history of the U.S. Army. On November 4, 1979, supporters of the Iranian Revolution were protesting against the U.S. government's involvement into Iranian affairs and their refusal to extradite the former Iranian monarch Shah Reza Pahlavi. They had then captured 52 Americans and held them hostage for 444 days. This event, known as the Iran Hostage Crisis, was the beginning of the long-lasting hostility between the United States and Iran. On April 24 and 25, 1980, within Operation Eagle Claw, six C-130 planes and eight RH-53D Sea Stallion helicopters flew to Iran, carrying 133 men from Delta Force, the U.S. Army Rangers, and the CIA. They were supposed to participate in the rescue of the American hostages. This operation that started smoothly ended up being canceled as only five helicopters arrived in good condition at the Desert One improvised airfield in the Iranian desert. The debacle was complete when one of these crashed into a fully tanked C-130, causing a massive explosion that resulted in the death of eight men. The failure of Operation Eagle Claw urged the Office of the Secretary of Defense to establish an organization called the Joint Test Directorate, under the staff name Honey Badger, to find a new approach that was more likely to succeed. Out of the many projects on the table was a plan codenamed Operation Credible Sport, which seemed the most promising. The idea was for Delta Force to storm the U.S. Embassy in Tehran from the nearby Amjadian Stadium, from which they would be transferred by a C-130 Hercules. Once the Deltas rescued the hostages, they would lead them back to the stadium, where the same C-130 would take them to the security of a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier in the Persian Gulf. Using the C-130 for the operation was a logical choice, as the aircraft had a very large storage capacity, a much larger radius of operation than a helicopter, and was designed to land and take off from uneven terrain. The problem was that the C-130 needed at least 3,000 feet of runway, and the length of the stadium pitch was no more than 500 feet. Finally, the aircraft had to meet the requirements of landing on an aircraft carrier using the arresting cable system. These preconditions led to the extensive modification of the aircraft. The team assigned to the project in June 1980 consisted of specialists from Lockheed, the U.S. Navy, and the U.S. Air Force. They were tasked with modifying the Hercules into a super-stall, short takeoff and landing aircraft, and the deadline was set in 90 days. The first idea was to use JATO, jet-assisted takeoff bottles, a concept that had been developing for some time in the Air Force. When a calculation was made that 58 large JATO bottles were needed for the modification, the team decided to switch to a lighter but more powerful solution, missile rockets. 
On August 19, 1980, the U.S. Air Force approved the modification of three C-130H airplanes from the 463rd Tactical Airlift Wing, tail number 74-1683, 74-1686, and 74-2065. What the team devised was to place the rocket on the specific spots on the fuselage in order to enhance the takeoffs as well as to reduce the stopping distance of the aircraft. Three types of rockets were used for the task. Mark 56 rockets, used for the RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow missiles, AGM-45 Shrike rockets, and ASROC anti-submarine missile rockets. Eight ASROCs, four on each side of the fuselage, were mounted behind the cockpit and were pointed forward in order to stop the aircraft during the landing. Eight Mark 56 rockets were mounted on the aft rear fuselage area. Four rockets on each side had the task of assisting with the takeoff and were pointed rearward at a 45-degree angle. Eight Shrikes were mounted above the wheel wells and pointed downwards to break the plane's descent and soften the landing. Another four Shrikes were mounted on two wing pylons to secure the stability of the aircraft, as well as another two rockets in front of the beaver tail at the rear fuselage to prevent overyawing. Additional modifications included reinforcing the fuselage, installation of extra fins for better stability, and a tail hook on the bottom of the aircraft for landing on aircraft carriers. The modified C-130 was equipped with improved electronics that included terrain following and avoidance radar, a GPS navigation system, and onboard computer that was supposed to control the rockets. In case of system failure, the computer had a manual backup. The first modified aircraft was number 74-1683, designated as the XFC-130H Superstall. It arrived in the test area at the Eglin Air Force Base on October 17th. After passing a number of initial tests on October 29th, it was ready for the full test, including both takeoff and landing. Lockheed's flight crew decided to use the manual system of rocket control. The takeoff was impeccable. Propelled by eight powerful Mark 56 rockets, the aircraft was airborne at only 150 feet after brake release. The flight went smoothly, and the crew turned the aircraft for a rocket-assisted landing. When the aircraft reached an altitude of 12 feet, the upper set of ASCROC set off. At that point, the aircraft unexpectedly lost speed. The flight engineer, completely blinded by the flare of the rockets, thought the aircraft had touched the runway and activated the lower set of ASROCs. While still in the air, the aircraft lost altitude and leaned towards the right side. The right wing broke off immediately upon impacting the ground and set the aircraft on fire. Luckily, the airfield rescue team extinguished the fire in a matter of seconds, saving most of the equipment and allowing the crew to exit the aircraft safely. The project was intended to continue as the second aircraft's modification was almost complete. For security reasons, 74-1683 was dismantled and buried on site. Only two days after the accident on October 31st, the Iranian government announced that they were accepting the Algerian proposal to end the hostage crisis. Newly elected U.S. President Ronald Reagan also decided to give way to diplomacy on solving the crisis. On January 19, 1981, the United States signed the Algeria Declaration Agreement with Iran that resulted in the release of all 52 hostages. Operation Credible Sport had been terminated. Modification of the second C-130 did continue under the cover operation of Credible Sport 2, but was eventually abandoned for financial reasons.